ओम भूरभुव स्व तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्रधीमि धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 ही नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम टू आई एम गोइंग टू नरेट an incident or you can say an experience by anam lai swami and that experience changed his life forever anam lai swami came to bhagwan in 1928 after a brief spell working as bhagwan's attendant he received a new job from him supervising all the building projects in the ashram between 1928 and 1938 working directly under bhagwan he supervised the construction of the cow shed the vid patshala the dining room the store room the old office block now used as the book packing room the dispensary and the large revetment on the north side of the ashram in 1938 an experience he had with bhagwan changed the course of his life forever i went to bhagwan's bathroom to help him with his morning bath madhava swami and i gave him the usual oil bath and massage when the bath was over madhava swami asked a question bhagwan the people who take ganja lehyam and ayurvedic medicine whose principal ingredient is cannabis experience some kind of ananda what is the nature of this ananda is it the same ananda the scriptures speak of bhagwan replied eating this ganja is a very bad habit then laughing loudly he came over to me hugged me and called out ananda ananda this is how these ganja taking people behave ananda means bliss it was not a brief hug madhava swami told me later that he held me tightly for about 2 minutes after the first few seconds i completely lost all awareness of my body and the world initially there was a feeling of happiness and bliss but this soon gave way to a state in which there were no feelings and no experiences i did not lose consciousness i just ceased to be aware of anything that was going on around me i i remained in this state for about 15 minutes when i recovered my usual world consciousness i was standing alone in the bathroom Mad Bashwami and Bhagwan had long since departed for breakfast. I had not seen them open the door and leave nor had I heard the breakfast bell. This experience completely changed my life as soon as I recovered normal consciousness. I knew that my working life at Sri Ramnasaramam had come to an end. I knew that henceforth I would be living outside the ashram and spending most of my time in meditation. In 1942 following a request from Bhagwan he came back to the ashram and did one more major construction job the construction of a dispensary. Though he was not a full time ashram working after 1938 he continued to help with minor ashram works. whenever bhagwan asked him to do bhagwan approved of his decision to leave and within a few hours of having had the experience anam lai swami had established himself in palakotu the sadhu colony which adjoined the ashram bhagwan encouraged him to build a house there and even helped him by advising on its design and construction 
Anamla Swami has lived there ever since. In fact, he has not left Tiruvannamalai even for a single day since 1938. Bhagwan told him to lead a quiet, reclusive life and to meditate continuously on the Self. Taking this to be his Guru's Upadesa, he spent the succeeding years trying to stabilize in the experience of the Self. A brief glimpse of which had been given him by Bhagwan during their encounter in the bathroom. After many years of arduous and unremitting effort, he says that he was able to stabilize himself in self-awareness to such an extent that the experience is now continuous and effortless. In the last few years, many devotees have started to visit him seeking spiritual guidance. Though he does not encourage visitors, he is health permitting, always willing to see people who want to talk about Bhagwan's teachings or the practice of meditation. The following exchanges recorded in 1987 are typical of the many that have taken place in his ashram in the last few years. So, some people they have asked the some question they wanted to clarify their some misunderstandings, some misconceptions, and Anamlai Swami in a very typical and very simple and very nice way he replied and removed their misunderstanding and misconceptions. One devotee asked the question, what is the easiest way to be free of the little self? This little self is nothing but ego. Anamlai Swami, stop identifying with it. If you can convince yourself this little self is not really me, it will just disappear. But how to do this? Anamlai Swami replied, the little self is something which only appears to be real if you understand that it has no real existence, it will disappear, leaving behind it the experience of the real and only self. Understand that it has no real existence and it will stop troubling you. Consciousness is universal. There is no limitation or little self in it. It is only when we identify ourselves with and limit ourselves to the body and the mind that this false self is born. If through enquiry you go to the source of this little self, you find that it dissolves into nothingness. Now, what is the source of this little self? Little self we can say, ego we can say, or false I even we can say, or the basic thought that I am the body. Yes, they, by so many names this ego can be called. So the source of this ego is our Atma that resides in the spiritual heart. Now further the devotee asked a question but i am very accustomed to feel i am this little self i cannot break this habit merely by thinking i am not this little self now anamlai swami says this little self will only give way to the real self if you meditate constantly you cannot visit away with a few stray thoughts Try to remember the analogy of the rope which looks like a snake in twilight. If you see the rope as a snake, the real nature of the rope is hidden from you. If you only see the rope, the snake is not there. Not only that, you know that there never was a snake there. When you have that clear and correct perception, that the snake never at any time existed, the question of how to kill the snake disappeared. 
apply this analogy to the little self that you are worrying about if you can understand that this little self never at any time had any existence outside your imagination you will not be concerned about ways and means of getting rid of it next another question was asked by a devotee it is all very clear but i feel that i need some help i am not sure that i can generate this understanding of uh, by myself anam lai swami replied <clears throat> it is all very uh, okay the desire for assistant is part of your problem don't make the mistake of imagining that there is some goal to be reached or attained if you think like this you will start looking for methods to practice and people to help you this just perpetuates the problem you are trying to end instead cultivate the strong awareness i am the self i am that i am brahma i am everything you don't need any method to get rid of the wrong ideas you have about yourself all you have to do is stop believing them the best way to do this to replace them with ideas which more accurately reflect the real state of affairs if you think and meditate i am the self it will do you a lot lot more good than thinking i am the little self how can i get rid of this little self <clears throat> the self is always attained it is always realized it is not something that you have to seek reach or discover your vasanas and all the wrong ideas you have about yourself are blocking and hiding the experience of the real self if you don't identify with the wrong ideas your self nature will not be hidden from you you said that you needed help if your desire to gain a proper understanding of your real nature is intense enough help will automatically come if you want to generate an awareness of your real nature you will be immeasurably helped by having contact with the gyani the power and grace which a gyani radiates quietens the mind and automatically eliminates the wrong ideas you have about yourself you can make progress by having satsang of a realized guru and by constant spiritual practice but the guru cannot do everything for you if you want to give up the limiting habits of many lifetimes you must practice constantly most people take the appearance of the snake in the road to be reality acting on their misperceptions they think of many different ways of killing the snake but they can never succeed in getting rid of the snake until they first give up the idea that there really is a snake there people who want to kill or control the mind have the same problem they imagine that there is a mind which needs to be controlled and then take drastic steps to beat it into submission if instead they generate the understanding that there is no such thing as mind all their problems would come to an and you must generate the conviction i am the all pervasive consciousness in which all bodies and minds in the world are appearing and disappearing i am that consciousness which remains unchanged and unaffected by these appearances and disappearances stabilize yourself in that conviction that's all you need to do bhagwan sometime told a story about a man who wanted to bury his shadow in a pit he dug the pit and stood in such a position that his shadow was on the bottom of it the man then tried to bury it by covering it with earth each time he threw some soil in the hole the shadow appeared on top of it of course he never succeeded in bring the bring the shadow many people behave like this when they meditate they take the mind to be real try to fight it and kill it and always fail 
दीज फाइट्स अगेंस्ट द माइंड आर ऑल मेंटल एक्टिविटीज विच स्ट्रेंथन द माइंड इंस्टेड ऑफ वीकनिंग इट If you want to get rid of the mind, all you have to do is understand that it is not me. Cultivate the awareness. I am the immanent consciousness. When that understanding becomes firm, the non-existent mind will not trouble you. Next question was put to Namla Swami. I don't think that repeating "I am not the mind, I am conscient consciousness" will ever convince me that I am not the mind. It will just be another thought going on within the mind. If I could experience even for a moment what it is like to be without the mind, the conviction would automatically come. I think that. One second of experiencing consciousness as it really is would be more convincing than several years of mental repetitions. <clears throat> Anamla Iswami replied, "Every time you go to sleep, you have the experience of being without a mind. You cannot deny that you exist while you are asleep, and you cannot deny that your mind is not functioning while you are in dreamless sleep." This daily experience should convince you that it is possible to continue your experience without a mind. Of course, you do not have the experience of full consciousness while you are asleep. But if you think about <clears throat> what happens during this state, you should come to understand that your existence, the continuity of your being, is in no way dependent on your mind or your identification with it. When the mind reappears every morning, you instantly jump jump up to the conclusion: this is the real me. If you reflect on this preposition for some time, you will see how absurd it is. If what you really are only exists when the mind is present, you have to accept that you did not exist while you were asleep. No one will accept such an absurd conclusion. If you analyze your alternating states, you will discover that it is your direct experience that you exist, whether you are awake or asleep. You will also discover that the mind only becomes active while you are waking or dreaming. From these simple daily experiences, it should be easy to understand that the mind is something that comes and goes. Your existence is not wiped out each time the mind ceases to function. I am not telling you some abstruse philosophical theory. I am telling you something that you can validate by direct experience in any 24-hour period of your life. Take <clears throat> these facts which you can discover by direct experiencing them and investigate them a little more. When the mind appears every morning, don't jump to the Usual conclusion: This is me. These thoughts are mine. Instead, watch these thoughts come and go without identifying with them in any way. If you can resist the impulse to claim each and every tho thought as your own, you will come to a startling conclusion. You will discover that you are the consciousness in which the thoughts appear and disappear. You will discover that this thing called mind only exists when thoughts are allowed to run free, like the snake which appears in the rope. You will discover that the mind is only an illusion which appears through ignorance or misperception. You want some experience. that will convince convince you that what i am saying is true you can have that experience if you give up your life love life long habit of inventing an i which claims all the thoughts as mine be conscious of yourself as consciousness alone watch all the thoughts come and go come to the conclusion by direct experience that you are really consciousness itself not its ephemeral contents clouds come and go in the sky but the appearance and disappearance of the clouds don't affect the sky
your real nature is like the sky like space just re remain like the sky and let thought clouds come and go if you cultivate this attitude of indifference toward the mind gradually you will detach yourself from it so i end this video here i will continue in the next video thank you my dear friends please like comment and share the video and subscribe my channel namaste my dear friend thank you namaste namaste